Tiny Fest Del Mar. Here we go, best of the show. Come check out some vans and some tiny homes and off-grid living. EJ Johnson, I'm with uh, the owner, builder of Johnson Custom Van Solutions, San Diego. I don't do putty or paint, caulking. It's all stain grade, it's more like a yacht. And as you can see, when you go look inside, that everything has fit and finish. We have a 174 by four here that you just completed. He's got all the bells and whistles for Magical Off-Road. Black Rhino wheels with 275, 70. Pretty big tires. No rub? No. They took care of all that for us. The CA tune bumper on there. The winch. Take us inside. Okay, yeah, so that the interior features a black laminate over half inch Baltic birch, which is the industry standard. The upper cabs and the ceiling is is a natural bamboo so it's it's very light this is a no expense spared build right that you did because it has three-stage heating from van life tech so there's full radiant floor air and on-demand water also has a cruising comfort air conditioning system which you don't see if you look to the right but there at the top that's your ac duct coming out right where you want it. What's cool about this one, it appears to be a countertop, right? As you look inside, it's a Modelo fridge. Nice and therm C-130. Our cooktop is flush instead of standing proud. This stuff is called Rich Light. It's made out of paper. And we laminate that in-house over half-inch bamboo. We got a Victron Energy servo touch screen. That pretty much tells you everything that's going on in here. In the system, that's an S-Pod, and that's a Bluetooth mic controller. We have a secondary alternator from uh, Nations, wake speed, and that, that produces upwards of, you know, 100 amps plus. This one also has uh, 800 amp hours of Victron Energy batteries. These are a European style window. Well, what's great is they're an awning window. They're dual glazed acrylic, so there's air in between, so that's where the R factor is good. But it also has this cool screen feature. So. Got full blackout, and then if you pull it down, now you have a bug screen. And then there's roll left bug screens here, the fine Canadian company, so then you can keep all your bugs out front and back. This toilet is self contained and NASA actually uses this. So it's just got a bag. No smell, right? No smell. Good. So you go in the bag and then the toilet. You push toilet. the button and it sucks the air out and spins it shut. And it compartmentalizes it. Big deep uh, black stainless under mount. Similar to this table. Flare space too. So we have a high quality shower. It's your water fill inside, so if someone couldn't contaminate it. We've got some lighting here. A little storage. This is uh, on a magnet right here. So this is a full five fold, five foot pull out. Then here's the power system in here. Yeah, that's done by my wizard uh, electrician. He used to actually work for a, a, an electrical place that does fire trucks, ambulance, and SWAT vehicles. So he knows what he's doing. Which, if anyone knows, those are the hardest vehicles to wire. Yeah, because you're cramming all this technology into a small space. That's how it's supposed to look. That's clean. And then this is mostly water storage on the side. Yeah, there's 36 gallons of fresh water there. And a doggy door. Pass yeah. through. Right, or if you need to stick something long in there, like a surfboard or something. Very cool. Yeah, a little bit of storage up there. Really. Always, our goal at JCBS is to maximize storage. Like some people use the fuzzy fabric, but this you can wipe down. Life is good, man. Thanks, EJ. See you. Appreciate the grind this morning, too. Yes, sir. Go inside? Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Right? That's a trip. <laughs> First met these guys in Placerville, NorCal last summer. And here we are in Del Mar, California. What's up? This is Josh with Outpost Vans. Uh, we're at Tiny Fest, showing off one of our previous builds we did for a client. We actually met here last year at Tiny Fest. Uh, this is a 2022 170. Some of the key features we got out here. Big pop top, it's family four. So kids get to sleep up top there. Flares right here, extend the sleeping space. Someone up to 6'3 can fit with these flares. You could go for the extended ones and get someone up to 6'5. Pelican boxes up there. It's a nice uh, little option if you want additional storage. Lumet steps, aftermarket suspension on it, tuned to the weight of the van from the uh, Agile Off-Road. Out in the front, you'll see we got Baja Designs lighting. We've got CA2 and bumper, worn winch right there. So you're good to go out and get out of any sticky situation. We did uh, line X on actually all of the uh, plastic molding on the outside. And the lower quarter panels here. Fridge freezer right here. It's Cruise 130, drawer style. Table right here, flips down, have drinks outside. Access to for the kids to pop up on the top there. It is removable, take that out. You can store it off to the side. Has the hooks up here to make it so it easily to, uh, hooks in. It's not gonna fall off on you. Queen bed? Yeah, it's roughly a queen size. Um, it's really comfortable up there and you can really set up. Flip down seat right here. So cool thing of this, opens up this area when you are parked right here, but when you're driving, to go. This is from Friedman. They're the company to make this. So it's a FMVSS certified seat as well. So package, we got a speaker there, speaker over there, rear doors as well. Um, that's all controlled via phone or up in the monitoring console here. JBL setup, water heater, inverter for your 3000 watt inverter charger, water tank. You can see measure that diesel heater, water pump. Uh, and then we have a Switch Pro here for a lot of different options. So everything can be controlled via Bluetooth on my phone as well. Uh, induction cooktop right here on the counter. Cool two burner one. We have 810 amp hours of lithium batteries, so large battery bank, no issues as far as uh, power goes. Cool feature right here. Nice welded up stainless steel shower. Dry flush toilet in here. So people always are like, how do I get a shower and a toilet in the van? This is your option right here. You, this is battery powered, it's a wet bath, you can get wet, you can take it in and out, you can do your business outside or inside here. More storage under here, water filter, actually has UV on it as well. 12 volt AC unit back here. So this is rad, you can run this off grid, I can turn this on right now. Um, it's blowing out to the back right here, so mom and dad are gonna be nice and comfortable in bed. Kids, it's okay, they got ventilation up top. <laughs> And then some more storage in here, storage underneath, um, reading lights, roof fan here, bunk screen out the rear, USB outlets throughout, 110 outlets throughout as well. So advanced fully custom, you know, a client picked the upholstery, picked their cabinetry color, picked their flooring, countertop, the exact layout. So the van was fully custom built to what they wanted, full one off. Build time on this van? Build time is roughly probably five months. And cost? Cost uh, all in, including the van, is 269k. Well, under the hood, we got the ARB twin air compressor right there, coupler right here. So easy, quick disconnect. And then we've got another one out the rear of the van. And then right over here in this corner, you'll see we got the uh, other coupler right there. So it's cool for airing up. And then also, if you want to be able to like blow out um, sand or dust or anything out of the back of the van, it's a great option for that. Owl box carrier right here. They wanted an option to possibly add bikes in the future so they could add one up bike racks right here for the mountain bikes. Max tracks, recovery boards, storage option right there. Keep them up there. Right, shovel and ladder to access the boxes up there. And a WeBoost antenna, we added a cell signal booster. So you can stand on this to be able to access those for recovery gear. Just dirty stuff you don't really want to keep in the van. Uh, we always do an outdoor shower setup too, wash down station. So that's good when you just want to wash down stuff. And then lots of storage in here. Plumbing's over here. We have 28 gallons on board with a four gallon water heater in there and a little more storage. Electrical's all over here. So we have three 270 amp hour lithium batteries. Uh, 3000 watt inverter, like I said, 
a second alternator on the van for charging, as well as a 180 watt solar panel on top of the pop top. We put an extended fuel tank on this, so we have 47 gallons of fuel. You're gonna get roughly 900 miles to a full tank. Is the fuel tank a common request these days? It's becoming it, yeah, it's for people that want to get out there, go down to Mexico, or just go out of state, fill up, and come back to California and have cheaper for diesel. And you guys are out of Oceanside, California. Yeah, we're based out of Oceanside. Um, we do the custom vans, do rentals. Um, feel free to hit us up on outpostvans.com or on any social media. Wow, you are a picky little bug. <laughs> This might go viral. <laughs> right here. Hi there, I'm Autumn from Sacred Southwest. Check out my YouTube. This is my 2013 Nissan Sentra. I've been living in it for 10 months full time. I've wanted to do this forever and finally took oh the plunge gosh. last May. So welcome to Little Red. What prompted you to move into your car? Uh, freedom. I wanted freedom. I want to be able to live everywhere and I work from the road and I wanted to be able to keep my income <laughs> so I don't have rent or a mortgage payment and I have freedom. You're very tidy. That I'm OCD and that works really well for living in a car because it can get messy real quick and like literally overnight it's a disaster. That's where my shoes go and then down there I got pretty pretty boxes for storage. Where do you mostly travel to and park at? Uh, the Southwest. I park mostly in National Forest and BLM land. No one thinks I'm in here, so if I do stealth camp in cities, it's very stealth. So as a solo female traveler, you don't feel sketched out or it's not unsafe? No, I do. I did a full, very thorough self-defense, a uh, whole training <laughs> regimen before I'm here. I, I make sure to be prepared, situationally aware. This is my bed, a, like a chaise lounge, and I sit here and put my laptop right there and work from the road. I got a 300 gigabyte hotspot from Verizon for my, my small business. Also, I chop my vegetables and whatnot there. This is my fridge. It's a 19 quart Apicool. It's fantastic. This dip back here, I have a 1500 Jackery Explorer. It's excellent. I got a solar panel to recharge it. I didn't think it's the prettiest thing. So this is both for a flat surface, which is gold in a vehicle and uh, also makes it kind of prettier. So this is all self-built, the bed platform, everything? All self-built. I built it in three days for less than $300. How do you cook? I cook mostly outside on my table. I got a little table with a butane burner. Uh, I can cook with a little electric skillet, plugging it into my Jackery on the inside. And uh, if it's really bad weather and I don't feel like pulling out the electric skillet, I do a lot of cold cuts and salads. How much do you have to make you save a month living in your car? Oh. <laughs> I would say at least sixteen hundred a month, at least. I would have said four thousand. It's the what I was paying in rent before rent and utilities and whatnot all came to about fourteen hundred, and yeah, so I still have gas, insurance, cell phone bill. That's about it. <laughs> and to top it all off, it's a stick shift. Yes, it is. It which allows me. I push this car to the limits. I go off road so much. I am worried I'm going to destroy it one day. <laughs> But I definitely off-road this thing, and the stick ship helps with that. Thanks for the tour. Yeah, thank you. My name is Evan. I run a YouTube channel called Stories from a Van. Uh, we're here at Tiny Fest uh, 2023, and uh, this is my van that I live full-time in. Um, and I'm mostly in cities. I don't really travel a whole lot, so I'm usually in the same spot every night. Uh, and so I spend my days usually out away from my van and I just come back to it in the evenings at night and, and it's kind of like a little mini micro apartment I stay at. What's the motivation for getting off grid or not having an apartment? Like yeah, else? well, it was, I mean, the way I designed it, I designed it specifically to be a stealth camper. You can see like my sink is pointed inward into my van as opposed to like having it accessible outside. Uh, it was something that I knew I wanted to be able to do uh, be able to use all the features of my van without any of the doors open. I'm gonna move back to uh, uh, Santa Cruz, and uh, I don't want wanted a way to go back there without having to pay rent, and also uh, have the flexibility to move in and out whenever I wanted to. Uh, and that actually gave me the option, you know, at the time I didn't even think about this, but I was just so tunnel vision on just living in one city because I love wanted to just move back there uh, that I realized I can live anywhere. So I ended up. Um, uh, 
uh, shortly after that, I lived in San Francisco, and I would go back in between San Francisco and Santa Cruz, and now I'm in Orange County. So Why the smaller platform rather than a transit or a Sprinter van size? You know, it was uh, interesting because I had originally found uh, um, uh, a van, like a van conversion company called Recon Vans, and they specifically converted the MV200. And the original plan was actually to buy this van so I can get them to convert it. But I ended up doing it um, all uh, myself with, with the help of my dad. My dad's a cabinet maker. He's a professional cabinet maker, so that obviously helps out quite a bit. A more low profile than a Sprinter. Yeah, and it's in the cost too. It was, uh, I bought, this car was uh, bought brand new at 2018 for 22,000. So it's, it's quite a bit cheaper. It's almost like half the cost. Uh, even less than half the cost in like a, like a Sprinter nowadays. You don't feel cramped in here? No, not at all. And Again, I'm not, I'm not hanging out in my van all day long. If I was in my van hanging out and it's like rainy, you know, it's like, yeah, that would kind of suck. Uh, I'm not on the road. I'm not out in like the wilderness where I have no amenities. I'm, I'm in the city all the time. So that having that support, I'm in like, I'm indoors in, in buildings where there's like, I actually have access to restrooms, right? So I supplement that with, uh, you know, living in here. So yeah, I have two solar panels on top. Um, Low and, profile. Yep. And I don't worry about power. I have, I've never had a, my battery ever go out. So at the back of, of it split, um, on the left is all my electrical. And then on the right here is all my plumbing. So here's for my plumbing, so right here I have both of these are fresh water tanks. My gray water is actually mounted to the undercarriage. Uh, and I have a water pump here. This is, this is an accumulator. This is not, this is kind of like an optional thing. You don't really need this. This is, this is what actually um, pumps the water. Um, I have a foldable sink. This can fold down. For inside, I can use this as a desk. Uh, I used to live stream on my van, actually. And so I have an outlet to charge my, my uh, laptop. Um, and I can open this window up and I can be just looking outside while at my desk. My solar panels go to the charge controller up here, and then they go down. These are the two wires that charge the, uh, the battery here. Uh, I will say that my electrical system is quite quite a bit of an overkill. Like, I really don't need all of this stuff. I really could just get by with just a jackery, really. But uh, but I didn't think about that when I first designed the van. So. And the mirror, that's the best part. Show us the mirror. <laughs> yeah, so like I have a stool, I sit here. I actually cut my hair right here. So... <laughs> Right outside, I put like a shower curtain so all. Can you pull the mirror off for us? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, I That's do this cool. to like look, I can see the back of my head. <laughs> so. That's one of a kind, I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. How much money do you estimate you save a month living in your van? Oh, I mean, so like I calculated what my base like cost for everything I just need, like, like a, a, a car insurance, phone bill, um, all, food. All that stuff, I is nine hundred. That's like rock bottom. You're living on nine hundred bucks a month. Yeah. In Orange County, California. In Orange County. In yep. Exactly. And you're eating well. You're not eating at you know, Panda I, Express every no, day. No, exactly. Yes, I'm eating well. I'm, I just I just stealthy on the streets. Stealth. Yeah. Yep. And you've never been hassled. No issues. No. Nope. Nope. When you find a spot where nobody bothers you, you I've been in the same spot for the past seven months. And even in San Francisco, no one's ever tried to break in your van or anything sketchy? Not break in, fortunately, no. Uh, I, because I parked in the, the better parts of San Francisco. Yeah, seven months strong there, so. And no end in sight? Uh, yeah. Keep going. Yep. Thanks for the tour, appreciate yeah. it. Of course. Uh, my name is Mike. My name is uh, Lauren. Lauren, and we're both outside. Uh, we live in San Diego. Um, originally from New York and originally from Michigan, um, and we're just part-time travelers. Part-time travelers, we have a 1981 Toyota Land Cruiser that we got on Craigslist. Original owner had two, he had to get rid of the other. We got this, our hands on this one. It was an Australian emergency response vehicle that we converted into a camper. Yeah, it was our quarantine project, uh, so we, you know, it's been about two years to get it to a, like a good enough state to use, and then just, I mean, we're still working. So tell me, did, when you say converted, is it box original to the Australian mm -hmm. version? Yeah. So it used to be an emergency response vehicle, so it had this like box in the back, but it had um, walls on the inside that we gutted and basically just kind of tore it down. Uh, we did the automotive paint job. Um, the wing doors were on it. They were storage compartments that they used for overlanding equipment, but we blew it out, added a bed, there's solar up top. 
So you have ru you have running water, yep. running water, you have your kitchen, yep. and then no toilet, no shower. We have, we have a, a compost toilet that we use when we take out, and then we have a shower being installed around where the sink side is. Okay. So we'll have a curtain on one of these panels on that side. My name is Kyron, this is Zoe, my girlfriend, and we've been living in this cargo trailer for the last six months of our lives. We built it out, DIY, first time builders, and this is our life. What prompted you guys to move off-grid into a trailer? Being able to work anywhere, take work with us, it was kind of like the best of work and pleasure, being able to travel and see the world while still maintaining our jobs. <laughs> Why a trailer, not a Sprinter or an RV? Yeah, that was, so originally we started with a box truck, we purchased a box truck, uh, spent like a month fixing the engine, drove it across the country, and then we realized that we don't like not being able to disconnect from our home when we need to go do chores like laundry or get groceries or just go explore the city. Um, so we wanted that detachability. Right Show now. me what you built. Yeah, for sure. Check her out. This is our home. A full-size flatty. Yep. Yeah. It's on a mount so it can pivot all the way out and we can sit on the bed, watch TV. We both work remote, as stated, so we have a workstation. We have a full uh, queen-size bed up here that's lifted up, so you can have the back door drop down, get some fresh air. Lots of storage overhead, big pull-out drawers for all of our things. A nice big sink, which is nice, especially when you want to do the dishes. <laughs> so for a cargo trailer, you'd expect you to make some sort of concession? I'm not seeing any. What's that? There's no concessions here. You got yeah. a full size shower. Yeah. A bathroom. Exactly. You got all the amenities that you have at home that allow us to live on the road and we don't need to connect to no RV park. We don't need to connect to anything. We have everything that we need in our house. And I saw on the outside you said this was a forty eight thousand dollar total build with a trailer. Exactly. That's including the trailer brand new which was about ten thousand dollars of that um and then all the other money went to the renovation almost a walk-in closet yeah almost a walk-in closet how much you guys estimate you save a month living off the grid <laughs> man i mean rent nowadays is crazy so i figure thousand i mean at least probably a month <laughs> and where are you guys from originally? Uh, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. And oh, I'm right. from Raleigh, North Carolina. Very nice meeting you. Absolutely. Thanks for the tour. Thank for sure, you. man. The internet wants to see fake smiles, dude. Why do you think Joe Austin's so successful? 